Hi guys, this is Tina. Welcome back to my channel. So we are here for another one of our mass making sessions. And what I thought we could do today is make like triple pockets. And I've hunted around. I have a few of these ready made. And lo and behold, I now can't find one to actually show you what I'm talking about. Um, I'm still kind of looking for it even now, even though I've switched the camera on. Oops, I might have just found one. Yay, I've actually found one. So we have done something similar in the past where we've made like double pockets and I just thought we would add like a third pocket into these. I have used these before in journals and they're just, you know, really good roomy pockets like that and they're quite good for obviously using up your book page or your sheet music. So all I'll do is follow the same, you know, the normal format where I'll demonstrate a couple and then I will obviously stop talking through the process and we can just relax into it. So all I have brought along is I've brought along some book page to do my, you know, this centre pocket. Uh, I've also brought along a sheet of sheet music because I might do a couple with sheet music instead of book page. And then I've brought along a whole bundle of um, A4 sheets of paper because that's how I've made these in the past is from A4 sheets. Now, of course, you could cut down scrapbook paper into kind of A4 size. Um, I know that in the US you don't have A4, but this is like your regular standard copy paper size. It's very close in size to that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of all I've brought along. Uh, just a word, if you're using the scrapbook paper, your pocket might turn out quite bulky unless it's quite thin scrapbook paper. Obviously, I've opted for the copy paper because that's nice and thin. If you're going to be using scrapbook paper, it might be worth just checking that it's of a thinner quality. You know, like you get the really papery ones and then you get the card ones. I wouldn't necessarily say this is going to be ideal for using the card ones. So let me just raise my, my camera a little bit because I know that sometimes since I'm my new camera, I'm struggling to be in frame. So hopefully this is now going to be good. Um, and aside from my paper, obviously I've got my scissors and I've got my bone folder, I've got my inks and I've got my glue. And I think that's kind of it really. So we will just get making one straight off just to talk you through the process. So I'm just having a quick look through here, deciding which one I want to do. So I'm going to take this sheet here. This is coffee dyed, so you know, it's not sort of just plain color. Now, if you followed along with the other one where we made the double pockets, we did them like this. So you then just had your pocket here like that. Now, what we're going to do, we want to make more room so we have a third or a third sheet of paper in amongst there. So what you're going to want to do is kind of make your folds further out like that and like that. Again, I mean, I do not measure, I just judge by eye. And to be honest, I mean, I think that's quite nice because then you have a range of sizes to put in your journals. They're not all going to be identical. And then you're just going to kind of fold this over, you know, wherever you want it, bearing in mind that you're going to have another pocket in there. So I'm going to just kind of fold mine over here like that. And then if I just bring in some book page, now I've brought along a few different book pages so that if I tear some down, you know, cut some of these down, um, I might have, you know, an opportunity to use some smaller ones. But for the first instance, we will just take this one, which looks quite a big page. And then all you're going to do is simply, you know, fold it over like that. And then you're just going to slot it in to your other piece like that. Now, of course, at this point, you can sew, you know, you can do it however you like. I'm going to use glue because, you know, my sewing machine's not here. And to be honest, you know, the sewing is fine. It's, you know, it's really nice. But I don't think you have to have a sewing machine, you know. And um, I know that lots of people have asked me recently and said, you know, I don't have a sewing machine. Am I going to be able to make these? I personally think yes. Um, you know, I personally think everything pretty much everything that we make with sewing machines I think can be made just as nice with glue so yeah I mean that's my take on it 
So I'm just going to slot that in. Now what I'm going to do is just then chop it down at one end. So I think what I'll do is chop it down at the bottom. So all I'm going to do here is glue my top pieces because I didn't really run that very close to the top. So I'm just going to glue that down there. And then I'm just going to glue this down here like that. And then my, you know, final pocket here. Just run some glue down. Fold that over like that. And again, you know, you might want to use your glue, glue spreader. Like that. Now it's up to you really whether you want to actually stitch your pocket. Not stitch it, sorry, stick your pocket here you know, along this line, or whether you want to leave it long. I mean, obviously the bonus from leaving it long, you're gonna be able to put something much bigger in there. So I think that's kind of quite nice to do. Um, but again, you know, completely up to you. So what I'm going to do here is just cut it down slightly because otherwise it's going to be the full height of the page. Not that I mind that, but again, you know, it's nice to have a few different ones. So you might want it sometimes the full height of the page and you might sometimes want it shorter. So just trim it down to your desired height or by all means keep it you know as full full page height it just depends really on you know what you fancy and we might do some full page height ones and some smaller ones and then I'm just going to then if I need any extra glue doesn't really kind of need any actually but just pop a little bit in there and then we're just going to glue this bit down here like that and then we just glue this one down here and on that flap as well that's it and I'll just get my dried baby wipe and just make sure all my all my ends are all glued down and that's it so literally could not be easier but I really like these pockets because they really provide a lot of, you know, a lot of room in them. So, and, um, you know, like we say, it's a good way to use up your book page or maybe your um, sheet music and things. So I'm just going to take in another page and, you know, talk you through again. And then we'll kind of get on and do a couple without me waffling on. So again, just regular copy size paper. And like we say, you know, I'm not measuring or anything. I'm just judging by eye. So some might turn out slightly wider than others. That's all fine. You know, does not matter at all. So I might do this one as a full height page. And again, I'm just going to kind of bring that in like that. In fact, I might want to, I might want to even fold this in slightly more. And you may wonder why I'm folding it in and not cutting it off. I'm not cutting it off because A, it would make it pretty flimsy if it were just, you know, single sheet of copy paper. Whereas doubling it over, you've then got, you know, much more robust piece then to use as a pocket. But also, I think it feels really nice. Once it's doubled over, it takes on this kind of like different feel to it. So I think that's, you know, something really nice to do. Uh, right, so let's just bring in again some book page. Oops, that's not going to be long enough. So luckily I brought along some sheet music. So just going to fold a piece over here. And it's nice to mix it up and have some, you know, some sheet music, some book page. Because, you know, you never know what might take your fancy when you come to actually do your pieces. So I might just fold this in. Oh, I might have it that way. Because I wanted a bit more of the music showing. So let's just do that. Just going to trim it down here at one end. And I'm going to keep this at full page height. So again, all I'm going to do is glue this flap down. I mean, to be honest, you, you know, you probably could just get away with just gluing the edges. 
I like to kind of glue it everywhere <laughs> just so as I know that it's properly stuck but you know just experiment and see what method suits you best because I mean as you know as we often say I mean what suits me might not suit you and to be fair you know I think we're learning all the time and so you know this is my method today but who knows I might do it again in kind of two months time and just by fluke do it slightly differently and it might be a much better method so um you know just play around and find the method that suits you best I don't think there's a right or wrong way it's just about achieving your your results as easily as possible I think okay so we're going to then have that one there so I'm just going to glue that down and again sort of focusing more on this end because obviously that's the end I'm I'm sure of for the height and then I'm just going to run some glue down there probably a bit more glue on here because this is vintage sheet music it may be a bit more fragile than this you know which is obviously not vintage you know so it's not quite so brittle well it's not brittle at all okay and then exactly like the other one all I'm going to do is pop this in here sort of roughly where I want it and I mean, as you can see, this is a lot wider, so it's going to go sort of much further along. That's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to, oops, run my, run my glue, please don't start mucking about. Oh, isn't it annoying when we have things like this going on? Hold on. I did check that my glue was all unclogged before switching the camera on and it was all fine and all good and now look okay right okay so we're just going to then glue that down now i like to not have the you know this loose flappy edge as the pockets i like to have the folded edge if you see what i mean because i just think unless you've glued it completely 100 percent, you might have bits then that your paper would catch on when you're you know putting things in the pocket so yeah if I can at all possible I try and have the folded edge on the pocket edge if that makes sense again you know <laughs> that's not a hundred percent rule that's my preference but I mean there are times when obviously you know maybe I forget or you know maybe kind of the piece of paper just you know lends itself better to being glued the other way so it's not sort of hard and fast rule but just generally if I can at all possible I try and have the folded edge as the pocket edge okay so that's that one and we can just then glue that uh sorry not glue it chop it down so that's going to obviously be full page height so let me see hold on oh just got something here to show you so on your pocket page or sorry on your your journal page that would be full page height like that so what you could do is stick it on three sides like that onto the page so you'd have pocket here pocket here and a pocket there which is really cool isn't it and I'll just show you you know the smaller one so you'd have like a gap above and a gap below I mean, actually, I think I probably prefer the full height page. I'll just show you this one that I'd already made. Again, pocket there, pocket there. And, you know, if you glued it down like that, you'd have then a pocket here as well. So they're really good, aren't they? And, you know, they provide a lot of space. And my gosh, can it get any easier? I mean, talk about, like, one of the easiest pockets to make. So, um, you know, really good way to use up lots of sheet music and book pages and what have you. So I'm just going to sort of, you know, be quiet now or quieter. I can't promise to be quiet because um, of course I might not, I might not manage that. But I'm just going to try and be quieter and we'll just, um, you know, get making a few more. So, yeah, I'm just literally taking a few random sheets and we'll just make them. 
and as I say, you know, don't don't measure them or anything. Just suck it and see and kind of, you know, however they come out. So no right or wrong. You might want to do it with your bone folder because then you might get a better crease. And actually one other thing, you know, as you can see, this one obviously is stitched around on the sewing machine. These are just glued. I mean, personally, I really don't think that the stitching enhances it particularly. You know, I think they're perfectly nice glued. So if you don't have access to a sewing machine, they're really nice without the sewing machine. You know, I don't think that's a essential, you know, to make these. Okay, so let's just bring in some more book page. Again, just fold that over like that. So I hope everybody's having a good day. I hope that the weather is nice and things where you are and that you're managing to do a bit of crafting. I'm filming this today on the Monday. So I tend to film ahead with all of my videos, except weirdly the mass making, which uh, weirdly when I started doing them, my intention was definitely to film ahead. I think probably as I'm kind of running out of ideas to do, um, you know, they're kind of a bit more last chance saloon you know the day before I'm like oh what should I do this week for the mass make um yeah so anyway so I tend to be filming them like the day before recently um but that's quite quite nice actually to actually be able to have a video where I'm talking about things that are actually happening instead of like three weeks before um so yeah the sun is shining here it looks like a nice day. I think the forecast is nice. I did see the weather this morning and actually it showed temperatures of like 24, which sounded lovely. I don't know whether that will be the case because often often they say it and then it doesn't transpire. But yeah, it sounded lovely. It was, it was a pleasant weekend. It wasn't like really hot or anything, but it was dry and it was quite nice. So... And obviously over here, they're kind of lifting the lockdown restrictions. Um, you know, slowly but carefully is their stance. Stay alert is the, you know, tagline that they're using. So, yeah, I mean, we're all in a transition period, I guess, aren't we? And seeing how, if, you know, how things are going to pan out. I mean, nobody really knows, I guess. Have mixed feelings, as I'm sure probably lots of you do. Um, you know, I obviously can see that, you know, of course the country, you know, and the world can't just stay in lockdown forever, of course, but equally it feels slightly, you know, I feel slightly apprehensive about things, you know, going back to normal. I, I mean, not everything is going to, they're not allowing restaurants and cinemas and theatres or anywhere like that they're not being allowed to open so you know that's good um but definitely I mean obviously there's a lot more traffic on the road and things like that now because of course you know people are trying to now get back to some form of normality going back to work and things like that I mean I guess there must be an awful lot of people still unable to work because they may be working retail or work in hospitality um you know I don't know, just mixed feelings really about the whole thing. Um, I mean, I just pray that obviously everybody's staying safe really. But anyway, I mean, it was absolutely lovely at the weekend to be able to go out um, because the kind of stance now is, you know, go out for exercise for as much as you like, use the parks and all that kind of thing. So long as you're socially distancing so on um the weekend it was lovely we went out for you know i mean i say a long bike ride it you know it wasn't long it was like 40 45 minutes you know that's quite long to me um and we weren't like racing or anything um but yeah that was kind of nice to be able to do that and then yesterday i mean the weather was not beach weather by any stretch of the imagination but because we live quite close to the beach although going to the beach was not really advised obviously you know for us it's 
it's a local thing. So what we did was um, we put our bikes on the car and we drove down to the beach that we go to and my parents live kind of there. And what we normally do, you know, every summer when we go to the beach, we just park at their house and then we bike to the beach. So we did that yesterday. Um, and then my parents were out doing their bike ride when we got there. So, of course, we didn't see them. And I haven't seen them for all these weeks, you know, other than on FaceTime and things. But when we got back from the beach... Um, you know, to pick our car up and put the bikes back on the car. Um, my parents were there, so we had a cup of tea with them sat in their front driveway, which, you know, I mean, I guess is like the new normal now, isn't it? So, but it was really nice to be able to see them and, um, you know, really nice to, it felt normal. It felt like, okay, we were sat in their driveway, but, you know, it felt really nice and, yeah really nice to be able to sort of see them and you know catch up as we have not been able to do for these weeks so that was kind of really really nice um and I mean we sat in their driveway for quite a long time we were there for I don't know quite quite a while maybe an hour or something um you know had a cup of tea my mum had made a cake not because we were going there, because she obviously didn't know that we were going there, but she had made a cake coincidentally during the week. And um, so the kids had some cake, you know, again, sat in the driveway and she bought the cake out and we, you know, she just put the plates down. And then when she moved back, they went and got their plates. And, you know, I went and got my cup of tea that she placed there kind of thing. So, you know, we did not go closer than probably five metres. Well, not five metres, but, you know certainly three or four meters or something so I mean we were definitely practicing social distancing so yeah we weren't breaking any breaking any rules or anything like that but um you know that felt really nice to obviously be able to see them because I haven't obviously seen them for a long time so you know and it was nice for my daughter I mean she's you know she's six so I mean she's still very much at the age where she loves going to visit her grandparents you know um so that was nice for her to see nanny and obviously it was nice for them she's you know grown in those few weeks since they've seen her her hair's grown and you know all those kinds of things um yeah and i mean it just weirdly it didn't feel that strange just that you know where we were sat in the driveway having having our um tea and socially distancing you know it, it felt weirdly normal you know so that was really really nice anyway and it was just yeah really nice to just even see them again it was like oh um but yeah and when we were at the beach i have to say it was not the warmest and my sons had both put on you know shorts and t-shirt and i kept saying to them you know i don't think it's that warm today you know, you might want to kind of wrap up a bit warmer. Oh, we're fine, we're fine, you know. Well, of course, it wasn't very warm. I had four tops on. I mean, I'm quite a cold, chilly person, so I anticipated it was going to be freezing. And, um, yeah, I had four tops, like a big chunky cardigan, my denim jacket, a long sleeve top under that, and a short sleeve top underneath that. So I had plenty of layers for if suddenly the weather warmed up. Um, my daughter... <laughs> She just had a summer dress and her denim jacket and we took a cardigan for her, but, you know, she didn't wear it. And then, because the beach is her absolute favourite place to go, you know, that's her, she loves, loves, loves the beach. I mean, we all like the beach, but she really, really loves the beach. And, um, yeah, she was like, oh, I'm going to put my bathing suit on. So she put her swimming costume on, you know, even though everyone else was quite chilly, she was like dressed as if it was a proper hot summer's day so um but she didn't care she didn't seem to feel that it was cold she obviously was having a nice time so yeah but so i mean you know then we sort of got on our bikes and biked down to the actual beach um 
you know, from their house. And I mean, there's beach all the way along, but the sort of bay that we like to go to. And um, it was great because actually it was kind of deserted and we were able to just have an entire sort of section of beach, like a whole bay bit to ourselves. And obviously that was aided by the fact that it wasn't really beach weather, but you know, it was really nice. And we obviously took a picnic with us and I took my flask of hot chocolate with me and it was just really nice to be out. And um, yeah, then as I say, we got back and then we were able to have a cup of tea at my mum and dad's in their driveway. and. That was really nice too. So, oh, just you know, who ever thought that life would be panning out like this? It, you know, at the beginning of this year, I just couldn't really have imagined things that were going to pan out. It's certainly, you know, very strange, but. So today as I film this is Monday, so my oldest son, he's doing his college course, I think I said before, but they're teaching them online, which is fantastic, you know, what a brilliant um, ability, you know, to be able to do that in this day and age, that's incredibly fortunate, isn't it, that they can do things like that. I mean, years ago we wouldn't have had that technology and that possibility. Um, so that's great. So he'll just be in his room for the whole day. He'll just come out briefly at lunchtime. Um, my middle son is just in his room, you know, allegedly doing his schoolwork. Who knows? Who knows what form that's taking? Um, and then my daughter, she's done some reading so far this morning before I came up to do my video. So she's read read a book and now she's doing some sort of fun like worksheet things um from the book it's that lovely julia donaldson book monkey puzzle um so she's doing like some worksheets connected with the book so we'd read the book and now she's just doing some worksheets so that's her little activity for this morning and to be fair you know I mean, I think I said before, but I had really underestimated how long they could concentrate for at that age and so to be honest you know, that will probably be enough for her for this morning because, um, you know, obviously it took her, I don't know how long it took her to read that book to me, but maybe 20 minutes or something. And obviously I don't know how long it will take her to do the worksheets, but I suspect a good 20 minutes at least there. Um, so probably kind of 40 minutes is, you know, enough. And then we'll do like maybe something else this afternoon for like 40 minutes, but... Yeah, I mean, I spoke to her teacher and um, <laughs> I did say I had obviously overestimated how long they could concentrate for. Her teacher just laughed, but, um, you know, I said, well, what would be the guidance of how long should we be teaching her for each day? And she said kind of about an hour and a half is absolutely fine, you know, like an hour to an hour and a half, really, because obviously in school you know they're doing a lot of kind of play and things like that as well so yeah but anyway so who knows maybe life will be back to normal you know or the new the new normal soon i don't know okay and my daughter also she had literally grown out of all of her clothes I think I've probably said this on another video but because obviously you know the the season has changed you know since this lockdown it's gone from you know freezing cold horrible weather to obviously now it's quite summery and nice so all of her summer clothes are from last year and she literally grows at the rate of knots and um so none of her clothes fitted and I think I've said before she had <laughs> put on a couple of summer dresses and things like that and it was just like, wow, you cannot go out in those because, oh, that just looks appalling, you know. And um, so she's been able to wear a couple of her dresses inside. But, yeah, I mean, you definitely, there would be no going out in those. And so she was down to literally, I think she had like three dresses that still fitted. So I put them on her bottom rack for her to be able to just, you know, her bottom hanging rail. 
for her to be able to just get to them. And um, she's, you know, just been like rotating those things. But obviously she does keep on putting old stuff on that she sort of prefers, you know, but obviously it looks appalling. Um, so, yeah, on Friday, I think it was, my husband, when he went into the supermarket, I still haven't really been into the supermarket. Well, I haven't been into the supermarkets. But he went in and when he picked up the food shopping, I just said, you know, just get her some new clothes of, you know, whatever you can manage to pick up. So he did. And I did also order some online, but the problem was, was, you know, they also have a delay. So they're not due to arrive for like two weeks. So it was just when he was going in the supermarket that I thought, well, actually, let's just see if they've got some stuff in there. So he bought her a few things from the supermarket. Nothing very nice because I assume that they also have got their problems with suppliers and things like that. So, you know, the stuff that she's got, I mean, it's not anything great or anything like that. Um, but he did manage to pick up a few things because, you know, she had like no shoes that fitted. She had no clothes that fitted. She didn't have like a suitable coat, you know, like her summer lightweight jackets. The sleeves were like up to here and things like that. So he'd picked her up anyway, a, um, a denim jacket and it was just plain blue denim because that was like all that they had. He did also, sorry, he did pick up a white denim jacket. Um, but she is a very messy girl and she loves nothing better than getting really mucky, which I suspect is why she loves the beach so much. Um, so yeah, I just kind of said, well, I don't think we'll keep the white one because wow, that is just going to look hideous within five minutes. So, um, you know, we said to her, well, keep the blue one, you know, but she didn't like it. She said, oh, I look like a man in it because it was just plain blue. There was nothing sort of girly or anything like that. Whereas normally, in the past, whenever she's had a denim jacket, it's had something sparkly or something girly on it or a flower or something like that. So she said, oh, you know, I look like a boy. I don't, you know, it's horrible. Well, luckily I had my flower trims and now that I've learnt how to use my sewing machine, you know, all those years later, I just sewed, um, you know, some of my flower trims, some of the white ones, across at the top of each of the pockets, you know, the breast pockets. And then also um, a around the whole collar and around the cuffs. And it looks so cute. It really looks good and she loves it now. So I was really, really chuffed. Because luckily that was quite a bargain they just happened to have like a few things in the sale. So he'd managed to get a couple of pairs of shoes, this plain jacket, a dress and a cardigan, all for like, you know, really cheap, like 24 pounds or something for all of those things. Um, but yeah, I mean, that probably gives you an idea of what, what type of things they were. But anyway, she was happy with everything else, you know, and at least she's got some things that fit now, but her jacket looks gorgeous now, so she's like really chuffed with that as well now, which is great. Because I did think, oh gosh, now she's not going to want to wear it because she thinks it's too, too boyish. Just thought I'd best just check what the time is. Because I've been waffling on so much, I'd, you know, not check the time. Okay, we'll just make a couple more and then we'll, um, you know, decorate one or two. Anyway, so that was quite a bit of luck because, you know, we've still got another two weeks before that other stuff will arrive. And obviously now that we've bought a few things, I will just send quite a bit of that other stuff back. I mean, obviously we'll keep some of it because she needs more than, than just the dress and the cardigan and the denim jacket. But, you know, at least it's a start. So, but, oh, she did make me laugh. Oh, you know, oh, I look like a boy. Well, I said, oh, she had said she looked like, and I thought she said boy. So when I then repeated that to, um, you know, my husband, I think it was, and said, oh, she doesn't like the jacket, you know, she said she looks like a boy. She said, no, mum, not a boy. I look like a man. I said, oh, a man. I thought she looked like a man, innit? But yeah, the difference that those um, 
flowers made because she no longer thinks she looks like a man. So she's quite happy now. And obviously denim was pretty thick to stitch through. So it was lucky that I just fathomed out my sewing machine just in time after, you know, nearly 20 years. <laughs> lucky. Hmm. this one down. Okie dokie. Trying to think if we have been watching anything interesting or good, good fun on the TV. Not sure that we have actually. Oh, thank you also so much to everybody who had really great advice for the vertigo thing. I still am experiencing it a bit, to be honest, which is really horrible. It seems not too bad, um, you know, crafting. It's mainly when I'm on my laptop, it seems really bad. So there's a few things that actually, you know, on some of the comments that I thought, oh, it could be that. It could be that, it could be that. So there were about three different things that I thought, oh, that sounds like it could be it. And one of them, weirdly, was, um, and I apologise that I, I'm not sure who said it now, but, I mean, obviously it's in the comments, um, that, you know, it could be something to do with, like, the eye thing. You know, like, where we're all in at the moment. And so we're only looking in the short distances. And, I mean, weirdly, that I did think that, sort of sounded like it might make some sense actually because um as I say I mean it's worst of all when I'm on my laptop and literally sort of comes back within a couple of minutes of being on it so I apologize but I'm probably even worse now for responding to comments and typing messages especially because I don't like typing messages on my iPad um you know so I do tend to save them for when I'm on my laptop but yeah it's horrible going on my laptop at the moment and um I just thought well actually that would make sense and weirdly yesterday you know when we did our bike ride and we were down the beach I probably felt the best that I had felt with regards to the vertigo symptoms so it could be that another person did mention it could be kind of a neck thing and she mentioned this technique, which now I can't remember what it was, which is annoying because only this morning I was looking it up on YouTube, how to do it. It was beginning with E, I can't remember. Um, the something or other manoeuvre. Um, and again, I thought, well, actually, yeah, that probably makes some sense as well. And um, yeah, so there was a few things. So thank you so much. I really appreciate everybody's suggestions because... Um, you know, often it's just these things that we haven't really thought of ourselves, isn't it? And when you hear somebody else say it, you know, you think, oh, actually, yeah, good point. You know, it could well be that. So, yeah, thank you so much, everybody who made all their great suggestions. But, oh, it's such a horrible feeling. And again, you know, I really do empathise with those other people who said that they also get it. Because it's... Oh, really horrible, isn't it? I mean, I have had that before when I've spent long times looking down. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just not very nice, to be honest. Not very nice at all. And the other thing is, because I had been wearing my glasses lately, I think I said before, but... Oh, I'm obviously coming to that age where I'm now needing to wear glasses a bit. And um, I'd bought some, weirdly, just before that lockdown sort of happened. And, um, you know, just some, like, cheap ones from, like, Poundland or somewhere. And so I have been wearing those all the time when I've been doing anything on my laptop. But strangely, I just thought, well, actually, that also would be sort of doing that tunnel tunnel vision thing, you know. So that, I thought, would make sort of a bit of sense. Why then 
you know, the vision especially could be a contrib contributing sort of factor. But, oh, it's not very nice, is it? So, yeah, definitely really empathise with anybody else who has it. It's horrible. Still got lots of jobs to do around the house and now the lockdown is lifting. <laughs> I knew this would happen. We'll all be wishing that we had done more jobs and you know got them all out of the way before the lockdown finished because yeah we made no progress. Oh well. We can't be the only ones can we? Thank you also to um, those people who checked out Carol from Red Crafted Boutique, um, her channel that she has recently set up. So that's lovely that you guys are supporting her. I know that she's uploaded a few more videos now. And um, yeah, I mean, I just met her literally through, you know, via, via this lovely community that we have here on YouTube. And... Um, yeah, I was excited when she said that she had posted her first video and it was such a fantastic um, project that she'd done. So, you know, I'm sure those people who went across and checked it out, I'm sure, you know, loved it and um, thought it was great. So, yeah. Right. I have quite a few things planned coming up on my channel and it's just literally having time to film everything to be honest um i know that i've talked about this recently in a video as well but that video might not be uploaded but I go through phases where kind of lacking my mojo and then other phases where you know you're like waking up literally like buzzing with oh my gosh i can't wait to do this or i can't wait to do that and i'm a bit going through that phase at the moment which sometimes that happens like if I return from holiday or something I might come back in you know in the first instant a little bit you know kind of out of sorts and then suddenly I can't you know can't do enough videos because I've got all these ideas kind of buzzing around and that's a bit how I am at the moment and I think it's probably just because obviously you know whereas before I was able to kind of have the day while the children were at school I'm now doing it in a couple of hours here and there so I think that's why it's happening is because obviously I'm just now not having the time available that I normally would and so you know of course the ideas are coming thick and fast you know and I can't get through them um, but yeah so I have a few things that as soon as I get a chance oops, get a chance to film them you know I will do them and hopefully you know hopefully some really fun things so hopefully we'll see well who knows whether they're going to be fun but I'm hoping they're going to be fun right oh gosh don't know what I did with that one but it did not go very straight I don't think it's gone straight even though I don't know who knows? Maybe I've cut that down previously or something like that. I don't know. Didn't look very straight, but. Oh, and also thank you so much to those people who watched my making tabs video. <laughs> I was so excited to make them because, um, I mean, like I had kind of said on the video, obviously I knew that I could make them with my punch board. Um, and I was just aware that not everybody had a punch board, you know, and I had obviously, you know, I loved those, um, tab, tab, you know, tab 
punches but I mean they're just extortionate and so no way was I going to buy one um so I was very excited to kind of like make some and um yeah thank you so much to all those people who you know watched and <laughs> hopefully found them as exciting as I did but lots of people I noticed I haven't replied to comments yet but um I did notice lots of people had said oh these are brilliant can we do them in a mass make so I just want to say is everyone happy to do that you know would you like to do that in a mass make um you know because I'm aware that obviously I only very recently did them so I don't want to kind of have everyone think oh gosh she's making them again you know she only made them the other day but obviously we only made a couple so if you'd like to do them in a mass make we can do those that would be you know that would be awesome I'd be more than happy to make them in a mass make so okay I'll just pop this down Oops. And then just here. And then I just check what the time is and whether it's time that we, you know, decorate decorate one up. Because I feel like it may be maybe heading towards that time now. Time flies when you're uh, mass making, doesn't it? Well, <laughs> I think it does you you maybe don't but yeah I think it does okay right let's just pop these papers off my lap onto the floor so as I don't drop them when I stand up to see the time oh my gosh we lie on 47 minutes when I looked just now I'm sure it said 33 minutes and that literally seemed like a couple of minutes ago so um yeah I had best get a bit of a move on here now just cut that one down a bit there. Oops, didn't cut that one down obviously enough. It's all still hanging out at the bottom. Right, okay. And of course, you know, I can trim these up when I actually come to use them because at the moment they're still quite soggy. So trying to cut when the glue is wet is, you know, often not really the best, the best time to do it. So how many did we make? One two three four five six seven eight can't count that one nine so nine so I don't think that's too bad to be honest they're really nice they're very um tactile I think they're yeah they're nice to hold so I might decorate this one up the reason being is because I'm actually making a journal at the moment from um these and some other things I'm <laughs> not going to say at the moment because obviously I've done some videos not that it's like you know waiting in anticipation it's not that exciting but if I just decorate this one up and then I'll have it you know ready for my my journal that I'm actually kind of making so okay so I'm just inking this up because this paper hasn't been coffee dyed or anything so this particular paper is my Rambler's Notes paper. I mean, obviously all the papers were different, so but this particular one is the Rambler's Notes. So it's very nature, nature themed um, background papers. And then there's a small sort of ephemera kit that goes with it with some pockets and things like that, um, you know, on the ephemera part. That's really pretty. Now, could use something like this. Again, these have been printed on that glossy, glossy photographic paper. So just then ink that up. And that's quite nice just like that to be honest but I might put maybe a label or something on there so oh just reaching down for my 
my little envelope of things that I've coffee dyed all of these and they all just need sorting out. I still haven't haven't got round to doing that. But eventually, I will eventually get round to it. So just see what might look best. Maybe even just like that, to be honest. Kind of smaller label there. And then let's just put that down. Did I ink this up? I think I did, but I can't remember now. So we'll just glue that on. Like that. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to put that label on there. The labels have been coffee dyed, nothing else has. Um, but yeah, this label has, but I'll just ink it up anyway, so pop that there. Like that. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Right. And then I have been using some of my lovely yellow lace that I had so kindly been gifted in Happy Mail. And what I've been doing is inking it along because it was, you know, quite yellow. So I've just been inking it up, which you can probably see there the difference. So just inking it kind of as I'm using it basically. So I'm just going to ink that a bit more. Okay. And then do I want that there on that book page pocket or here? Might look a bit much if I have it on both. Let's just pop it onto there first and then I'll see whether I could get away with another line of it. But it, you know, it might look too much, I think. Right, pop that down. Yep, so we might be coming to the point where we might have to do some repeats of the mass makes. Um, we'll see. I did say that quite a while ago and, you know, weirdly I've managed to kind of get through and find some other things to do. But um, I know that before people said they didn't really mind doing, you know, repeats. So, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I mean, some of those things I have used you know more of than others so I mean some of them you know I might kind of need to make some more anyway if you see what I mean so that might be the case for you guys too and you know if that's if that is the case I mean perhaps let me know the things that you know you've used the most of and we could sort of mass make more of that particular thing if that makes sense I mean obviously Probably not everyone's going to say the same thing, but when we start working our way back through gradually, I don't want to kind of be remaking something that actually most people haven't really necessarily been using a lot of. So, yeah, just let me know if there's anything you have a special preference for. As I say, I mean, we might not need to do the repeats for a while. We'll see how it goes, you know, because I thought we would need to do repeats way before now. Um you know, but we just, we'll just see. Right, I'm just going to have a look and see if I want to have a butterfly here. Oh, not that one. I thought that was going to be buff coloured, but no. No, no, no. Uh, and that's not bad, actually. Oh, I have got this sort of brownie one. Oh, yeah, that got a bit more impact to it, I think. So let's have that on. Just ink that up. It doesn't really need inking up, and to be honest, it's quite dark. The ink probably won't even show, but <laughs> I'm inking it up more for if I've got some shoddy fussy cutting, it would just help to disguise it a little bit. Let's just have it there. Okay. And to be honest, you know, you don't have to stick these in. You could have these as a floating 
a floating piece just paper clipped in would be awesome as well so you know use them as you as you fancy basically but if you wanted to have them as a floating piece you could always put some coffee dyed paper on the back for journaling space um you know up to you really so yeah that's our pieces that we've made today um i hope you like them hope you had fun um if you crafted along and you got some made or even if you crafted along and did something else in a mass make i hope you you guys all had a nice time so thank you so much for watching and i hope you'll all join me again next time so thanks very much then Bye.